One Day at Horrorland features the fictional theme park Horrorland, which is the setting for a future series R.L. Stein created called Goosebumps Horrorland. In the book, we follow the Morris family on their way to the zoo gardens, but they get lost and eventually end up at the eponymous theme park. They get out to ask someone for directions when their fucking car explodes. Wow. So the parents run off to look for a phone, leaving daughter Lizzie, her brother Luke, and his friend Clay behind. What's the worst that could happen, Mom wonders? Are you shitting me? Anyway, the park features attractions that seem to stage close brushes with death, leaving Lizzie and Clay concerned about their intended nature. Luke doesn't seem to mind it. They keep passing weird signs that say things like, No pinching and out of order. Dare to ride anyway? They finally meet up with their parents and they all make their way to the exit, only to be confronted by the park workers who say they've been on a live TV show all along called Horrorland Hidden Camera. And that they blew up the family's car on purpose? What the fuck? The apparent game show hosts put the family through another challenge in which they confront a creature that looks like Goro and other monsters. But they beat it. Their reward? Certain death. But Lizzie remembers the no pinching sign, so she pinches one of the workers who promptly deflates. The family pinches more of the workers and they disperse, giving the family enough time to escape. This is one of the more bizarre endings, but it had me laughing. Definitely one of the better books. Why I'm Afraid of Bees This book is actually darkly humorous, and there is even a morality lesson to be gained at the end, a first for the series. The story follows Gary, who is a depressing loner that gets picked on at school and at home. One day while playing video games on his computer, as we social outcasts are wont to do, he comes across an ad for a service that allows the client to switch bodies with another person. Gary is quick to take them up on their offer and on the day of the switch, a bee happens to be in the room. So what happens? Gary gets transferred to the bee, another boy named Dirk fucking Davis is transferred to his body, and the bee legit is transferred to Dirk Davis. This book is amazing. I don't want to spoil too much of this because it really is a great, funny book, but the moral of the story is obviously that you should take the time to appreciate what you have. Again, a surprisingly good read. Monster Blood 2! Oh yeah, baby, we got our first sequel. This time it's to the classic Monster Blood that was book 3 in the series. The story once again focuses on Evan Ross. His family finally made that move to Atlanta, but Evan is finding it hard to acclimate to his new surroundings. Why? Well, he's still traumatized by the previous summer's events concerning the eponymous substance. That's understandable. But then he makes it hard for other kids to accept him by blathering on about it in school. Social etiquette 101, people. Unless you're being sarcastic, don't openly admit to having been under attack by a gelatinous, ever-growing substance. Especially when you're in grade school. So luckily, Evan's old friend Andrea, or Andy for short, arrives, incidentally enrolling in the same school as Evan while her parents are away in Europe. The good feelings don't last long, however, as Andy reveals she brought something with her. Monster blood. Now how can that be? Didn't it all disappear one year ago? Well, apparently a speck of it survived in the can and, exposed to air, it's starting to grow. Hey, R.L. Stein had to keep the gravy train rolling somehow. Eventually, Evan's science teacher's pet hamster is given some of the monster blood to eat as a joke and starts growing in outrageous proportions, compelling Evan to commit an unspeakable act, eating the monster blood himself. He does this so he can stand a chance in corralling the monster, which is terrifying the science class. So he wrestles with it, but is soon overpowered. Right as he is about to be devoured, he hears a pop, and just like that, everything's back to normal. And he looks at the monster blood can. It has a fucking expiration date, and wouldn't you know, that very day was the exact date the blood was due to expire. Holy coincidence, Batman! But that's not the end, however, as later on at dinner, Andy receives a package from her parents. More monster blood from a toy shop in Germany! Wouldn't you believe it? Old Aunt Catherine mass-produced that shit. This book is obviously setting up for a sequel, and we already know there are two more to come. Since it's distributed worldwide, Stein could have just made the rest of the series about monster blood. But I digress. See you guys tomorrow.